preparation like for you guys out here? It was great. Um, you know, the weather's awesome. Uh, I'm a little biased to the Pacific Northwest. Um, you know, this time of the year, it is beautiful. Um, but it was great. You know, I, I think this is good for us. You know, sometimes it's, it's good to get in uncomfortable situations. You're not at home. You're not in your regular routine. You're a little bit facing a little bit different situations. So um, I think this is where we grow as a team, and I think it's been good. Hey, just looking at the Seattle defense, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, new faces and new, new folks over there. What do you see when you look at, um, you know, some of the things they're trying to do against Jordan Brooks and name a lot of people know well, I think it, I think really when it comes down to it, those guys all fly around, um, you know, and that they play sound defense. They play together. Um, you can see it just the effort that they play with, um, you know, their tenacity. That's that's what really sets them apart, at least from what I've seen on tape. Um, you know, so with that being said, it, it's it's really important for us, especially going into hostile environment, to be on the same page. Um, you know, these third downs, these red zones, it's going to be important that you know we're not hurting ourselves and making sure that we're doing what we got to do to, to execute. Then, uh, Denver, you know, they have 433 yards, uh, but the fumbles down low. And then uh, 49ers ran it 45 times. How, what do we make from that composite? Uh, well, it, it, I think from what we were able to watch on tape, um, you know, being able to move the ball is, is important, but it's being able to execute when you get down in the red zone. Um, Again, I think Seattle does a great job, but once they get into these situations where it's goal to go or even in the red zone, they're, they're causing turnovers. Um, they're making them kick field goals. Um, so as, as an offense, you know, it's important for us to be efficient in those areas, making sure that when, when we get down there, we're scoring touchdowns. Marcus, what's the logistical stress on you with all the personnel groupings, y'all roll in and out so much? I mean, it's not, it's not static. It's always changing. How much more difficult does that make your life, or does it? Um, I, I think the way we practice, um, it makes it makes it relatively easy. It's just being able to communicate it to the guys because um, it is it is tough. You know, when you're switching a bunch of personnel groupings, um, guys are playing different positions. You got to be able to communicate it um, really on the fly so that everyone knows where their position is and what they got to do. For you, it really does seem like you and Drake have a good connection even two games in. And he missed a lot of the preseason, so what do you kind of attribute that early connection to? That's all him. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, he's, again, um, you know, we, we think very highly of him. Um, what he does from a physical standpoint obviously sets him apart, but I think from a mental standpoint, it's been very impressive, especially as a young guy. Um, so with that being said, it, it's really on him. He's done a great job, and he, he deserves all the credit. When you say from a mental standpoint, he's different, what, what does that entail? Is it just, I guess, like catching up to the speed of the game? I know that's something a little bit, yeah. I would just say, like, in terms of, like, missed assignments or, you know, lining up in wrong places, I, I think, you know, what you would see from a typical rookie. Um, he's very on it in terms of, like, where he's supposed to be, how he's supposed to get there, um, what the play is intended to do. And from a mental standpoint, that's impressive for me as an older guy because it's not really – I think more, more times than not, when you're a young receiver, you're just trying to survive. You're just trying to make sure you're, like, all right, I'm in the right spot, you know, instead of, like – really diving into what we're trying to do. Um, so he's got a great feel for that, and I think that's why he's had some early success. Can we go back? I think you, in your answer to d -Lab's first question, you said being out here in, in Seattle for a week, this is where we get closer together. How does that happen? Really, I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, a lot of guys, their families are back home. Um, you know, you're going out to dinner, you're hanging out. Um, so I, I think a change in scenery, a change in routine, I think guys kind of have to adjust. and. Being able to do that all together, I think, is where that is going to build that chemistry that we need. We've heard from Coach Smith and from so many guys, you know, it's been a lot of good things in these first two games, but it's a matter of finishing. How do you make that happen? Is it just the in-game reps? Can you simulate it out here? How do you guys make that happen to get over that hump? Yeah, we do our best to simulate it out here. I, I think when we put ourselves in practice situations that are tough, I think when we get to the game, guys feel very comfortable in those situations. So. It's just continuing to line up and do those things. Repetitions, I think, is the mother of learning. And when we're able to do that, guys will feel comfortable when those, those points will come. One other time I want to hit with you, and Arthur went into this a little bit. It's, it's easy for you guys who understand this to look at the game and say, OK, well, the ball isn't going to Kyle Pitts for X, Y, and Z reasons. They're doing this, that, and the other that we don't see. How would you simply answer for the fans that are asking, well, why aren't they throwing at this guy more? How, how do you simply answer that? It's just the, it really what it comes down to is it's just a look. Um, you know, unfortunately, when you got a guy that plays at a high level like that, 
you know, they, they, he's kind of the number one priority on defense. Like, hey, we have to slow this guy down. Um, you know, I, I think coming off his rookie year, um, you know, people weren't sure really what he was capable of doing. Um, now that he's exploded on the scene and he's done what he's done, teams are, are very um, adamant about making sure they take care of that. Because um, once, he, once he gets going, man, it's, he's tough to stop. So um, we have to do a better job as an entire unit of finding ways to give him the football um, so that he feels like he's getting involved and he kind of gets that volume going. Um, but, you know, we constantly we are doing what we can. And, you know, sometimes just the ball goes the other way. And with that being said, you know, the, depending on the week, uh, I think as he continues to grow, I think the ball will find him. Uh, what do you see uh, in uh, Seattle cornerback Tariq Woolen, the fresh book? <laughs> fresh book? No, he, I, first and foremost, he's big and physical, right? I think he, you know, he stands out in that sense. Um, he's not afraid to come up and tackle. Um, he's not afraid to, to uh, come up and press and, um, you know, really just be, be kind of up in your face. And I think uh, for us, especially in this hostile environment, um, you know, it'll be, it'll be a good, good time for us. I think he's a great player and somebody that's going to be a good player for a long time. And how do you all um, combat the noise? We heard it up, you know, putting up quite a ruckus out here. <laughs> kind of right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you try to emulate it, right? But I don't think it's ever going to really get to that point that it is uh, in Lumen Field. You just try to, to work the nonverbal communication, um, making sure guys are, are confirming the signals. We're, we're all on the same page. Um, that's kind of the nature of the beast when you walk into an environment like that. It's hostile. It's going to be tough. Uh, it really just comes down to you know, being poised in the noise and, and handling that. You're cool in this building, right? You're not going to like to face anything? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Got good memories here, for sure. Yeah, Art, <laughs> said, uh, Art said the last, your last appearance here was uh, 450-something total yards or something? Uh, I just remember the win. <laughs> What's this week like for you guys? You're, you're away for a whole week. You get a lot of time together. What's this all like? Uh, just, you know, just coming together, continue, you know, to get better as a group. Uh, we're using this time, you know, uh, we had back-to-back -back West Coast game. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to use this time like we'll do in any, uh, any other game, continue to you know, get better as a unit and, you know, compete when it comes Sunday. You guys get to do anything fun? I mean, I know everybody goes out to dinner and you're hanging out at the hotel, but are you, gonna, you guys get to, like, do anything? You know, out out and about. Uh, yes, a few guys. I mean, whatever you want to do, you could you can do it. I mean, like obviously me, I've been kind of like locked in, so mm -hmm. watching a lot of film. Uh, I went out to eat, went did a little shopping. You know, just seen a few views. So, but yeah, uh, coach give us the opportunity, you know, to continue to bond as a group and do what we got to do, you know, as a unit. We've well, been locked in on the film. What stands out uh, about Seattle from what you've seen? Uh, just starting with the receiver core. You know, obviously you got DK Metcalf. You know, big, fast. You know, physical receiver. You got Tyler Lockett. You know, he's a veteran. Mm -hmm. um, he know how to, you know, create separation. And you know, the slot receiver. You know, D. Uh, I want to say Eskridge, uh, number one. You know, he's a slot receiver, got speed, Marquis good one. So that's a, a, a very versatile group. So, you know, us as DBs, we got to just continue to do what we do, uh, play physical, get our hands on the receiver when we can, and execute when the players come our way. What does Geno do well? What does he bring to this offense? Geno Smith, I mean. Uh, he's not at stand plays. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he one of the guys, he can, he can make the throws, you know, whether it's to the field, to the boundary. And he's just a, a, you know, a good competitor. So he's going to be one of them guys that try to, you know, sit in the pocket and make them plays. And, and last question for me is, you know, you guys did so many good things these first two weeks, and ultimately, you know, it goes down as two losses. How do you wrap your head around these two weeks? What you guys have shown, but ultimately not getting the result you want. Um, you, like you said, we have been doing a pretty good job, but, you know, there's always room for improvement. And that's what I like about this group of guys. We just want to continue to, you know, come in, work with our head down, and uh, continue to get better. Uh, you know, we just got to finish. You know, the last two games we, we've been, we, we haven't been finishing, and, you know, that's the big thing coming into week three. Just come in, you know, do our jobs. Everyone do their 111, you know, execute the plays that come our way and, you know, get this win Sunday. Long, yeah, what was it like to, to make the debut last week and how do you think it went? Uh, it was great, you know, just getting a feel for it and, uh, you know, just trying to make a name for myself. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, all the guys that came out there, all the rookies that played, uh, they did pretty good, so I'm excited for it. Looking ahead to Seattle a little bit. Um, a lot of folks are going to be watching the quarterback, different quarterback than they've had seemingly forever. So what stands out about Geno Smith? I'd probably say, like, the word is he have in the pocket. Uh, great ball, uh, great decision making. But, uh, you know, we just had to put pressure on him and just make him fumble the ball. What's it like up here having a week-long trip? I know it's the first NFL trip for you, but a little different to have it this long. What's it like? 
Uh, it's great. Uh, great atmosphere, great people, and uh, I, I love it out here. What do you look at this defense, week one to week two? What kind of places have you grown, and where do you want to see a step this week? I probably would say, you know, last year we didn't get as much pressure on the quarterback. But uh, this year I feel like, you know, we had the guys that made things happen, and I feel like this team is progressing every week. Hey, did you see uh, Devotion? I know, so I did. Okay. Um, and what are some of the team activities you all are doing? Uh, you know, I guess everybody gets to pick and choose a little bit, it sounds like. Yeah, I'll probably just say, like, you know, sometimes we just go shopping with each other, go out to eat. You know, just like little team bunny things like that. Uh, that cheesecake factory, though, of course. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of people in there. What, did you find some good stuff to do, get into? Uh, I'll probably say I haven't hit the cheese uh, cheesecake <laughs> spot yet, but uh, that's one of my, my to-do lists. There's some to-do lists, yeah, to -do list, <laughs> for sure. Got to right. do that. All right, thank you.